Good morning, friends. Welcome to my little farm kitchen. It is very early in the morning and everyone else is asleep still, except hubby who's gone to work. And I'm up, one of my favorite things to do actually is wake up early before the kids, come out, make a cuppa, light a candle. I love candles. I love candles like I love birds. I'm a crazy candle lady. So I like to light my candle, brew my coffee, and just sit quietly for a moment before the busyness of the day begins. But this morning, I am going to bring you along with me as I make bread for the day. I'm gonna start a sourdough loaf, but I'm gonna get some French bread in the oven. I did have a request for um, the French bread recipe. I do double the recipe, I make four loaves at a time because it does not last long around here. So I will do that and drink my coffee. <laughs> So my normal is to make um, sourdough bread a couple of times a week. That is my normal process. Um, but I also do make yeast breads. Um, two in particular, I make a French bread and I will make, I usually make four loaves. A couple of loaves will go at lunch. The kids love lunch with French bread. And then I will often try and sneak one away and cut it up and make a French toast casserole for brekkie for tomorrow morning. Then I stick it in the fridge and then that's just a really easy breakfast. I can get up and pop it in the oven. Okay, so I'm just gonna prep the, do the first step of the sourdough first. I've got my starter and do a cup of starter, a cup of flour and a cup of water. So the, um, this French bread recipe I originally got from Jill Winger's book, <clears throat> The Prairie Homestead, which is a cookbook that, although it is American, I um, bought it when we are in Australia and it came in my suitcase um, because there are quite a lot of recipes that I use out of here that I really enjoy. Um, and I Jill was one of the first people I found online who was making food you know, from scratch the old fashioned way. So I, years ago, <clears throat> I had no, no idea who she was. I've been following her for a long time and I really love her cookbook. So she, this is her French bread recipe. I will pop a link to her book um, below and I'll show you how I do it. So I always use, um, like I said, my preference is to make sourdough bread, but it is handy when yeast is available to have it in the fridge and these couple of recipes I like to do the uh, yeast breads but I always try to make sure that I'm using the non-GMO yeast because yeast is one of those things that if you don't check where your yeast is coming from and you don't check it's um, it could be could have GMO products in it and like I said I've got to double this for my family so it's three cups of warm water tablespoon of yeast, kind of heat because when it's warm you just kind of mix that in and activate the yeast. This is active dry yeast which another, um, it was Jill's book when I first got it that had the, all these recipes for active dry yeast and I was like what in the world is that because in Australia I couldn't you could find it I had to hunt for it and it was on like Baker's websites and things but generally when you go to the supermarket or you're shopping for yeast it doesn't call it active dry yeast it's just just now I'm trying to remember what it was called but I think it was just called yeast or Baker's yeast yeah I'm pretty sure that's what it was called <laughs> Oh no, you know that's gonna happen, hey, that's a bit scary, but my brain is gonna all of a sudden get to a point where I don't remember anymore. 
which things were Australian and which things were American. <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen, but anyway. I'm gonna mix in The idea being that active dry yeast um, needs to be put in some warm water and activated rather than if it's instant yeast, which is the other one they sell here, then it can be just popped straight into the recipe without being activated. So I'm gonna let that sit for a minute and get my, uh, let's see, where's my coffee? wake the kids with all my clanging around. Okay. So I'm going to put seven cups of flour. Of just waiting for it to all dissolve and then it starts to kind of you can see it moving around and becoming active i'm not sure if you'll be able to see it in the camera see they're getting some bubbles in the top there You do always want your dough to be nice and hydrated. So um, Jill gives an approximate amount of flour and if it is looking a bit dry, I always add a little bit of water. the bread has the dough has all come away from the sides of the bowl and it's holding holding its form and it is not too dry it's got a bit of stick to it which is what we want so I'm just going to pop this down take the dough hook out and cover it with a tea towel till it rises it's going to preheat to 400 and just have these pizza stones in here and I always cook the uh, French bread on the pizza stones. Okie dokes, it's about 45 minutes later, an hour, and it's risen nicely. So I'm going to pop it out. I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil down on the bench to um, stop it sticking. And I've got these couple of sheets of parchment paper that I'm just reusing to pop it on. Obviously this is quite a bit of dough. Um, I am I have doubled the recipe. So this usually makes two loaves. I'm making four. So I'm just going to pinch that into, into half and in half again. I'm going to kind of shape it out to a rectangle. A kind of rectangle, <laughs> nothing measured. Let's see if I can work this up to show you. Oh, I'm all greasy. So, a kind of rectangular shape. Okay, and then I'm going to fold it over, pinch at the seam, 
and fold it over again and pinch the seam together and then tuck this end in on itself so we end up with a nice round French bread shape and kind of just pinch it together. Now, if you haven't made your dough hydrated enough, this step is tricky because it won't want to stick. But if it's nice and hydrated like this, it should be fine. So then you've made it into a nice French bread shape. I'll pop it down here on the parchment. And the good thing about this is it takes a bit of practice to get it how you want it. But it really doesn't matter because it still tastes great, even if the shape isn't perfect. So we're going to shape this next one. Pinch. And then shape it again. And if you haven't pinched them together, it'll kind of come apart when you're baking. So you just want to make sure they're nice and joined, flip them over. So our French bread is rolled out and laid out. I'm just going to slash the top of it and I'm using this little blade, but honestly for many years, I just did this with a sharp knife, which works just fine. Okay, now I just need to do a quick egg wash. I have actually um, both forgotten to do this step and left it off when I was short on eggs. You can um, do a little wash with milk as well, that's another option. Or you can leave it until after it's baked and rub a little bit of butter over the top of the hot bread. Just get a little stick in your hand, a little piece, cube or whatever, and rub it over the hot bread and it melts into it and that makes a nice finish. And of course it actually is just fine without anything. So just use what you've got. Our oven is at temp, so we will pop these in. Kind of slide them in like so. And I'm just going to put a timer on for 25 minutes. So while that bakes in the oven, I'm just going to finish prepping this sourdough, which will then sit on the counter for today. And I'll probably refrigerate it and bake it in the morning.
I have done a, um, a full video where I go through the sourdough and exactly how I make it. I'll pop that link below if you want to check it out. Okay, that has is ready to sit in there and rise. And my little one's are waking up, so I'm gonna go sit on the couch and snuggle them while I wait for the bread to finish in the oven. Okay, the timer has gone off. So we're gonna check and see, looking pretty good. Okay, so here is the French bread, all finished and toasty. Ready this to one. get eaten up. Ready for the day and everyone's starting to wake up so we shall think about breakfast but that's basically how I do my french bread and it won't last long I am sure of that hey mister all right well thanks for coming along and making bread with me today and we shall see you tomorrow